Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisim, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. Um, uh, this conversation today will be about uh, how you may have been pulled or what may have occurred for a person to even explore the Kundalini, to to even be able to approach it uh, without knowing what it is. And this happens quite often, actually, and so this is the, the topic of the conversation today. However, I would like to welcome all of you. I'd like to welcome guest 1661 and guest 2285 and Amelia Centara and Rosemary Goliath and and uh, we have a special guest today that we would like to interview, and that is Rosemary. And she will tell a little bit of her story about how she became interested uh, uh, in, in a spiritual life and in, in a life uh, based on refinement towards a spiritual life. Um, and so we'll be uh, interviewing her later on. Uh, before I get started, though, I'd like to go ahead and... and uh, Say hello to Santara. Hello, Santara. Hello, Chrism. Hi, it's good to be here. I've only just arrived and missed uh, what you said before now. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's good to be here anyway, and um, I'm delighted to be here on another Wednesday, and welcome to Rosemary, and I look forward to the interview. Um, I'll just begin by... Um, First of all, telling you where you can go to if you would like to make a donation, listeners, to the work that CRISM does. Um, there is a website, and it is, this is the address, um, www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And if you would like to support CRISM, and if you can, in the work that he does, well, then that is the address that you can go to and on the top right hand corner you will find a donate button and it's very simple to donate after that i'll give you the address again that's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and also i'm going to make my final announcement about the kundalini awakening seminar that is happening at the end of this week in dublin it's possibly um too late for some people to plan if this is their first time hearing this information, although I, I don't believe it's ever too late if somebody is meant to come, well, then they will come. And I will do everything I possibly can to assist you if you're living in Ireland or in the United Kingdom or indeed in any part of Europe. Um, it's a very easy thing to get to the seminar. Please do ask me, you know, contact me if this interests you and we can have a discussion about how to make it possible so I'll give you the information the seminar begins this coming Friday on the 18th of October and it starts at 7 p.m. and as a group we will be together on Friday night all day Saturday and we finish on Sunday at 4 p.m. the venue for the seminar is going to be in County Meath in a beautiful area the Boyne Valley the Boyne Valley is um, a very special place in Ireland. Newgrange is one of the places in the Boyne Valley, and another place is Noth and Doth, which sound really strange, but these are very, very ancient monuments and sites from way, way back, even before the period, before the pyramid, and that is where we are going to be having our seminar. And our seminar actually begins on a, a lunar eclipse, which I, I think that is very appropriate. So, if you want to get in contact with me, I'll give you my phone number first, and that is, if you're ringing outside of Ireland, 00353-860297676. That's 00353-860297676. And the email address you can write to is Kundalini Matters at gmail.com. That's K U N D A L I N I M A T T E R S at gmail.com. 
So again, next weekend, 18th, 19th and 20th, I'm looking forward to welcoming Chrism to Ireland and to meeting with us at the seminar in County Meath. So that's it, Chrism. Looking forward to your arrival and to the show today and to hearing Rosemary. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia, for that fine, the, the fine set of announcements. Uh, I would like to also let people know before we begin that uh, you can get some of this information from the YouTube, which is uh, chrism.kundalini. And uh, if you go to chrism.kundalini, then you'll come to that channel. And I would welcome anybody to, uh, to begin to, to watch some of those videos. Another source that can be had is uh, at www.kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com. And uh, that's the numeral one.com. So Kundalini Awakening Systems One.com. And then go to the articles, read the articles, read the safeties, read the uh, I'll read all the information that you can on that website that Glenn Ola has so expertly uh, put into into the uh, onto the web. And I would like to thank Glenn Ola for doing that. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and, and get started here. When people... Prison? Yes, hello. May I just say to the people in the chat room, if that's okay, I'm not, um, I don't have a chat room window open today, so I won't be able to assist with that, and just to let you know as well. Thank you, thank you. I, okay. I, have, a, I have a computer here that has its screen kind of coming off, but it, I'm still able to read something on it. And so I have the chat room up, and I have uh, six people, uh, including Tim Ashworth. Hello, Tim, uh, who are joining with us uh, today. So, And this would be tonight, where you are. Uh, thank you, Tim, and all of you that are listening from Europe. I, I know it's, it's 11 o'clock there in the evening, so, so thank you for, for making that effort. And uh, I see Tim is typing, so thank you, Tim. Um, All right, here we go. When a person... Well, there are certain areas of spiritual draw. uh, uh, By that I mean a, a spiritual experience or a spiritual drive that will draw a person into a deep and sometimes lifelong uh, learning and participation in, in a spiritual belief system or um, even if it's a, you know, even from a volunteering viewpoint, uh, in some way a person will be driven to help other people. Often uh, these people will, will go into areas such as the church, uh, uh, the, any of the any of the various churches, from the Hindu to the Catholic to the to the Buddhist, uh, they all have uh, systems of service that that they give uh, to the people who 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 uh, partake of that belief system, and they give uh, into the populations assistance, food, clothing, shelter. Warmth, I mean, you name it. I mean, they're really out there doing their best to help people survive. But not always, and certainly not everyone. I'm, I'm trying to be uh, non-absolutist when I make these statements because, you know, everybody is different. But within the context of a spiritual lifetime pursuit, uh, kundalini people, before they activate, uh, will often be drawn into areas of service, into areas that will will really challenge your your uh, your tolerance. <laughs> that will really challenge your tolerance. And hello, Chris and Harris. I see you. Nice to see you joining us, Chris and Harris. Uh, it's difficult to tolerate people who are being mean to you, who are being unfair to you who are being judgmental of you, who are being uh, in some way, uh, you know, hurtful. And what I want to suggest, that if some of you are involved in that right now, and you're deeply spiritual people, 
Uh, this is not a bad thing. Hello, Michelle. This is not a bad thing. This is a a very positive level of refinement that you're being invited into. Okay, a very positive level of uh, of refinement that allows you to open your heart, open your love uh, to include a person who may not understand the deep connection to oneness and to spirituality that that many of the, the kundalini destined people will have. And I, I say kundalini destined people because they're destined to to have the spinal sweep. They're destined to live a kundalini life which which can be very, very difficult if if a person isn't able to expand themselves into offering and giving assistance to others through the, the many vectors that are offered in our societies, you know, such as churches or or uh, social groups or you know people of that nature. Now, I'm the only one here with a uh, with with a with a chat group. So everybody there on the chat, I see you and I and I and I, I saw your response. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I just want to let you know that I that I do see what what you have done, Michelle and Chris. So uh, as you enter into these volunteered positions sometimes and sometimes paid positions, your kundalini will begin to drive your interest. It will drive your interest in a way that will choose for you the most appropriate position of gifting, uh, of time and service and love and and patience and tolerance and healing uh, that that would be appropriate for you at this time in your development. It doesn't have to to happen when you're, you know, 40 years old or 20 years old or 30 years old. Or, you know, it doesn't have to happen. If, you know, you don't have to be an, an elder person to have this happen. This will happen uh, when it is best for you. This will happen when the kundalini in you has decided that you have reached a certain level of refinement uh, that is effective for you. Hey, uh, the, the folks that are on the chat group, can you write to me and let me know that this sound is, you know, we, we typically will have some sort of a sound quality issue. And if you could write, if you could write to me and let me know if you're hearing this okay. Hello, Adam. Nice to see you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chris and Harris and, and Tim and Michelle. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you, Michelle. It's a little quieter than usual. Oh, let me let me make this adjustment. Is this a little bit louder? Yeah. Hello. One, two, three. So, oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh shoot. <laughs> Okay, okay, I found the setting. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're lovely people. Absolutely lovely people. It was better before. <laughs> uh. Don says, thank you, Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, here we are. Okay, all right. So, well, as long as people are hearing it, I'm good with it. So... So we are indeed often drawn into levels of response to society. Even when you're a little kid, uh, you can be drawn into levels of response to society that guide you towards helping other people, that guide you towards being the healer in the group of friends that you may belong to, the healer who is maybe the loner. You know, but but people and animal and and animals and whoever you know they happen to come to this one person, so you don't have to be an adult to have this happen. But uh, you 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 know it can also happen when you are an adult, and and these levels of of helpfulness and consideration are definite markers for refinement and love based service that a person who is pre kundalini as a as a as a younger person. Uh, as they begin to develop, uh, their refinement markers will begin to, pardon me here, 
trying to find a place to put all this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, their refinement markers will begin to to cause them to do certain things, to to practice certain levels of of love and 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 helpfulness to other people. Um, this happened to me. This you know this happened to me when I was a little kid. You know I was always looking at the uh, the lost kitty or the uh, you know the friend who was hurting or you know if my if my mother was was having a hard time then of course I would try to go to her and heal her. Uh, these these types of scenarios are, are are you may think that they're common but not. Everyone is drawn into kundalini refinement parameters, but for those of us who are, it often starts in this way. You have to be challenged, or you, or people around you need to be challenged in order to, to, um, maybe I'll back this thing off a little bit here, but he's saying I'm distorted, uh, in order to, to begin to refine yourself towards a kundalini expression. Um, as this expression um, manifests itself, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Some people want to become doctors. Some people will want to become dentists. Uh, <laughs> some people... Yeah. Hi, hi, Adam. I see you. And and some people will want to become firemen or policemen. Uh these are all these are all really really helpful areas, but also uh you may want to become a, a spiritual leader or you may want to become a teacher in a in a grade school or things of that nature. These are all refinement markers for kundalini awakening development. Pre-awakening uh refinements that are occurring for a person so that when they reach that level, when the kundalini is saying, okay, watching you as you're a child, watching you as you as you are helpful, watching you as you begin to respond to the stimulus to choose a, a, a job or a career that is helpful, that is, you know, someone that can be dependent on, okay? And, uh, you know, with this in mind, I would like to introduce... Uh, one of my students, her name is Rosemary Goliath, and Rosemary and I, Rosemary flew out to the ashram three nights ago, I think, yeah, three nights ago, and we left Santa Rosa, actually we left, we left uh, San Francisco, where I picked her up at the airport, and we went uh, into Arizona and into the Grand Canyon and things of that nature, and we've just come back. And uh, she has a very, 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 very interesting uh, life plan that has been given to her through her kundalini. And uh, I would like to go ahead and bring her on right now. Hello, Rosemary. Hi there, Kristen. Hey, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for for flying out here, and, and it's been it's been a it's been a real treat having you uh, and sharing with you these these beautiful sites of the Grand Canyon and the east side of the Sierras and, uh, you know, these these areas that we have been visiting. Uh, but with regards to this conversation, I would like to, to kind of talk with you again, as we did in the car, about what drove you as an, as an early child to, you know, as, you know, as a younger person, as a, as a, you know, like say, a, if you can remember a, an eight or a nine-year-old, what kind of a spiritual life uh, did you have, and was there any indication that that uh, you, that you were entering into uh, Kundalini-based refinement protocols? Uh, no, Kristen, not that early for me. Although I was getting a good Christian education and family committed to Sunday worship, that kind of practice. But I was, and it was in the, the Catholic faith, and I was taught by Catholic sisters through grade school and high school, and I realized in high school that that's what God wanted me to do with my life. And I left right after high school, left home, and I was there for 25 years. 
and I can see things happening along the way that truly were guidance from my kundalini and also that, that desire in my heart kept growing. And after 25 years there, I said that something was missing for me. And I wasn't quite sure what it was, and I struggled with leaving because I was I felt at home there. But I did. I left. I had been in education. I taught high school. And several uh, a couple years after I left, I met a uh, dear man in the church pew, and we were married. He has since died, and I continue to work in some ways in my church. And I have always been drawn toward meditation and I could never really find the the tools or the instruction in that and that was coming along and I picked up a local little magazine and there was an interview there with Chrisom about service and it was very touching and I had heard the word Kundalini one other time but there was information in that publication on with Irene's number and when this I, uh, seminar was coming in like a couple of weeks and I really had no idea but I went and um, it was amazing to me how strong it has been for me and I really coming home and coming here being here with you Kristen has been a great blessing strengthened and developed and expanded refinement is a wonderful word and I know that this is, I, I feel my feet on the journey. I've always been on the journey, but I feel the ground under me with this work and with your direction and this community. And thank well, you for this opportunity. Oh, you're, you're, you're very welcome. And, and, you know, the, I say this often, but it's, I, I say it often, but it's really true. Uh, Kundalini is really uh, the one to be thanked. The divine is the one to be thanked. It is the one who is pretty much uh, giving us the, the 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 directions and the guidance that we need. As I mentioned earlier, from even a an early childhood experience, uh, the divine is guiding us and helping us and bringing us mm-hmm. into yeah a level of of uh, understanding that allows us to make appropriate decisions to help guide us into a more spiritual uh, 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 appreciation. And and, uh, Rosemary Michelle is asking, is Kundalini your higher self? And I'm going to suggest it is not within the context that we may understand the higher self to be. It is beyond the higher self. Uh, Unless your understanding of the higher self includes the higher self as being divine like say the uh the in the huna in the amakua uh if you see your higher self as being that of a of of a divinity well then yes the kundalini is your divinity it to me divinity goes far beyond the higher self the, the even the word self in there you see what I'm saying? The word higher self, you know, that 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 almost has an ego flavor to it. And it's mm-hmm. I know <laughs> I, I know Michelle did not choose the word. That was <laughs> that was going on long before <laughs> long before we're having this chat. Uh even pre Kundalini I would use uh, I would use the the term higher self as well. But Kundalini is your divine self. Uh and the divine self is what will control all aspects of the human person, whether it's the low self, the middle self, or or the high self in, in the uh, Huna tradition, which you know, low, middle, and high, or in the in, you know, just in the the, the New Age uh, uh, scenario where uh, people like to uh, kind of sidestep the whole divinity issue, and that. Uh, mm-hmm. The divine, you know, the people who are more interested in science can be a little bit put off by the idea of divinity. Uh, and and so they'll choose words like higher self. Uh, Michelle says that her understanding is that the higher self is the divine self. 
the part that sits with the divine and is part of that. Uh, so uh, Kundalini is is the divine self. Kundalini is the guiding force for a person who has reached that level of refinement. Allow them to enter into an enlightenment uh, equation that can enter into an a uh, a system of ascendancy. Uh, this must occur for people in, in order to in, in order for people to advance. And so, you know, frankly, though, I'll be honest with you. I don't care what you call it. You can call it Frank or Ed or Edwina. Uh, as long as you know you listen to it and you treat it with respect and and uh, and you and you act on the uh, <laughs> you act on the the uh, information that it's giving you. That's what really matters to me. Um, and and Kristen Harris says she's going to call it Dave. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> call it Dave. But seriously, uh, I think that uh, you know, try to avoid the the whole idea of labels, although with Michelle's question, it's a very appropriate question because a lot of the people who are wrapped up into science, uh, you know, they, they, they have a hard time with, with, uh, with, uh, crossing that bridge into divinity. Uh, and, and Michelle says that her experience has been a simultaneous emptying and filling internally. And, and as, as, as we, move in to a divine protocol upon our bodies, which means that the the kundalini is now an active force upon the body. It is controlling the body. It is doing these things. And the individual personality just gets to sit back and ride. It can scream, rant, complain, but it will initially have to to, uh, surrender to the will of kundalini. Now, Rosemary, did you experience any kind of a kundalini phenomena when you were a nun uh, during prayer or meditation or service to others? No. Mm-mm. What no, kind I, of I, what what, what kind more, of phenomena would you experience? Yeah. Well, I would say it was like a busy mind. I my my prayer time and and the meditation instruction wasn't anywhere near what I have learned since, but it was more reflection about something. It was intellectual. And I would do my best to do everything I was supposed to be doing because that was why I was there. And sometimes that was a little difficult, um, but it, it didn't reach the, the mind, mindless part, you know, where the, even at the uh, just basic uh, meditation where you, place your mind on your breath so that your mind is not doing all that stuff that it does when it's uh, doing its thing. I, so, I'm very familiar yeah. with the mind, mindless aspect, as you may have uh, observed as we were driving across country. Mm-hmm. That, that was a joke. But anyway. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> Get it. Thank so, you. <laughs> so, uh, within within the the disciplines that you were practicing as a nun, uh, could you know as you look back at that now, can you see opportunities that you may have missed that would have allowed you to to come into this sooner, or was that just not going to be the case no matter what? I it's not to say that it couldn't be. I can think of one particular sister that had something very profound about her, but I never knew what it was. She was uh, one of the musicians in the community, and uh, I would say that about her. And even the saints, uh, the communities of uh, religious men and women, those people that have had and written about their experiences are very, very few. True enough, true enough, true enough. Well, I would like to... uh to personally welcome you among their, among, you know, to, to be seated with them, Rosemary. Oh, my. 
Thank you, Chris. And that's um, and that, and that's that goes for well, that goes for a lot of us, Chris and Adam and and uh, I met Chris Harris. She spells her name K R I S M. And then uh, Tim Ashworth, and and I would assume Michelle, although I, I'm 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 not sure that I know Michelle, although she's like a very wonderful, beautiful person. Uh, so yeah, this this doesn't come to everybody, but when it does come to an individual, uh, they mm-hmm. will typically have to act on it, and they will typically be guided through uh, pain, pleasure, interest, disinterest. Uh, their guidance will be assured, but the goal of the guidance may not be understood by the individual. You mm-hmm. have to remember that for the most part, we're working from a, from a, a mindset of ego, uh, mm-hmm. fear of loss and want of gain, uh, uh, my way or the highway, um, uh, I'm the best competitor of them all, um, you know, all the different ego expressions. And so... Uh, you know this 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 may not be called to people who are who are continuing to work in, into from the refinement level of ego control and expression. However, even the Kundalini person will need uh, in their early life to get a good handle on their ego in order to understand and survive in this world. Ego serves a very very positive pur- uh, purpose, and and I want people to know that. I don't want people to think that even though I'm saying, okay, it's time to to uh, stop letting the ego control you, even though you know I'm saying that, it doesn't it doesn't diminish the very important work that the ego has done for the person uh earlier in life. It's just like our baby teeth. When we get our baby teeth, uh it's painful and, and yet they come in and, and finally you know we're able to chew food. And then they go away. The baby teeth fall out. Well, with Kundalini, I'm going to suggest that your baby teeth, your baby ego teeth, have fallen out. Or at least many of them have, shall we say. (laughs) They don't all fall out at the same time. Uh, But uh, from a Kundalini perspective, the Kundalini person can see that the ego teeth are leaving them one at a time or two at a time, and uh, they're being left with a divine counselor, a divine guidance that has an agenda for them that isn't always what they would have expected in their life. Okay? Uh, these levels of, of, uh, of grace are very, very powerful, and these are the levels of grace that will throw your karma at you. These are the levels of guidance from the kundalini, from your divine self, that will say, ah, okay. Uh, 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 let, let's say uh, Santara has this, has this uh, karmic responsibility that she has to deal with in this life in order for her to become uh, of greater service within her divine application of kundalini upon the people around her and so well let's give her this karma right now and see how she does so the karma is given and then you know that then then you know either the person is able to respond at that time or maybe later on you have to understand that kundalini does not have time constraints the same way that we do it understands our our understanding of time but it doesn't necessarily buy into it because it doesn't have that restraint. Okay, we see time as a linear thing. We see, you know, past, present, future, and with Kundalini, past, present, future don't really apply. It's just a river of of time that allows the five sense person to to proceed upon a life path that that sense to them. They they can say, okay, past, present, future, and live their life based upon the ideas of past, present, future. Well, when I was four, you know, I burned myself in the campfire, and so uh, now I know not to to stick my finger in the campfire, and I know in the future I won't do that. Uh, Okay. 
So I'm reading uh, Michelle writes. She says, uh, for me it has been about developing a relationship with the egoic parts of myself that is compassionate, embracing and understanding. So yes, I don't buy into it so much now. Well, see, there you go. There you go. At first, you know, you have a very good relationship with the ego. And, and the ego is not a bad, evil thing, although it, it, it can become that way. Uh, but it isn't typically, you know, you know, without me slipping into absolutism, isn't typically that way. Um, although it, you know, there there are those aspects of it. Uh, and then yes, 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 you you can see the ego's your inner child, and the inner child has been in charge of the body uh, for most of the time now. And with the kundalini, the kundalini will come along and say, "Ah, little ego child, here, I want you to sit over here." No, I want you to be quiet, and I want you to learn. This is how I am. I am uh, looking at uh, helping the ego to be transformed. You don't. You don't get to obliterate an aspect of yourself. What you do. What you are allowed to do is you're you're allowed to change and transform how you 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 choose what you're going to be uh, giving your attention to. Are you going to give your attention to the ego or are you going to give your attention to the kundalini and that guidance that's coming for you? And so as your process of refinement has continued uh, throughout your life and as the kundalini is beginning to come up in you, any of you, uh, I'm going to suggest that you begin to really look at your spirituality as the new reality for you. The new reality, not the only reality, but the new one. And the new reality is going to suggest that there are more than one reality. There are realities that are just scientific. There are realities that are just autistic. There are realities that are just, uh, you know, focused on material gain. There are realities that are just focused on fighting a certain kind of war. You know, we look at uh, General Patton, who fought for the uh, United States uh, during World War II. You know, here was a gentleman that viewed some of his past lives as, uh, as a warrior, as a soldier. Matter of fact, there's a documented piece of evidence where he's... he's uh, overlooking a, a plane and and he began to remember roman soldiers uh fighting uh you know uh an adversary and what they did and how they did it and all of this and this is documented and so and so yes this is these at these levels of attention that are given to the person will not necessarily uh, dovetail, or that's that's an American expression, that will not necessarily combine uh, perfectly with with what the person has been doing, but it will combine perfectly with what you are to be doing. Uh, the, the, the kundalini will not let the ego stay in control. That's the bottom line. It won't let it stay in control, and it can bring pain to the body, if it is, you know, if you're you're going to be in resistance to what the Kundalini wants to have happen, so uh, with regard to to giving yourself into a spiritual quest for for completion, if you're you know giving it to yourself into the into what the Kundalini has given to you as a spiritual quest for completion, then I'm going to ask you to sit the ego down. And tell it to be quiet and to learn. Um, what Rosemary did is Rosemary responded early on. You know, when she was 16, she answered that call to serve God. Now, I don't know that she knew who God was. I'm sure she knew who she thought God was, what her ego had been trained to believe God was. I'm sure at the, the time that she was 16, all the way through the 24 years of service and... and, uh, and uh, and study that she that you know she put into her to her uh, uh, ministry, uh, you know she she did very well with that. But it had to stop. 
And she also answered that call. Think about it. Think about it. Let me bring Rosemary back on here. Rosemary, you're coming back on. Uh, Centaur, if you could do that, because, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Rosemary? Yes. When, when uh, you know, after, the, the say, the 22nd year, the 21st year of being the nun, uh, when did you start feeling the the urge or the desire that that you needed to move on from this position well it was it was about those two or three years and what i would do is i would think it that it it really was about something else some particular aspect of the community or the, my work or whatever was seemed to be stirring up and then i would uh, deal with that, and I say good because I I really liked being uh, in that role of of church service and as a symbol for God and the sisters that I was part of wore a habit even in the later years, and uh, so and I I was in community leadership as well, so I thought as and it was a time when communities were dwindling and dwindling, and I said well that's okay I'll be here and I'll turn out the light and be the last one to bury, to be buried. And that just <laughs> what was intended. But it, it was a stirring and an unsettling and reaching out for help. And then in a number of times in my life, I would say to God, and it was the May of the year that I left, I said, God, I give up. I, I give up. Just show me. Show me what you want me to do here. And I really, as you're saying about the ego, just took that out of my ego realm of working and let it be. And then over the next eight or nine months, then it was just really clear. Well, that, what that was the... Uh, can, can you tell me the uh, the moment of truth and what you were doing when that moment of truth occurred? Well, if I think... I was sharing with you about putting shelf paper into the the new building is that were you referring to that yes yeah so this i i was a teacher but i lived with a community of sisters who were nurses and that was part of the hospital building and so this this ability the um i was free in the summer because i was finished my teaching and and i was working in that uh the new the new home and putting shelf paper in. I remember being down on the floor fitting shelf paper in before we put stuff into the and it just occurred to me that I just didn't want to be there anymore. Just and out of the blue it's just like just like wow, it's like Yes. Twenty four twenty four years is enough. <laughs> well and again, I'm not so sure that it I, I don't know, that it was an ability to accept and to see the possibilities of a spiritual life even beyond that structure and that I yes. had come to know people who had a much, actually a much stronger spiritual life than I had and through a 12-step program and I said, you know, I, I didn't need this particular structure for that. So what you're, what you're suggesting is that it, after 24 years, uh, Something within you finally said, "Okay, it's time to go." Yeah, yeah. And the possibility. Now, did, okay, so how did this turn into a Kundalini quest? Well, I think it was guidance. I'd probably still be there. I'd be back in Pittsburgh, you know, where the community is. Sure. Um, but, but it was as I said. I met uh, a delightful man sitting in the church pew. And what the gift of that marriage and that relationship was for me was was a gift all the way, and still continues to be. Was and it was it a was it also a spiritual gift? Did your husband yes at the time yes. did he? Uh, okay, all right, very good, very good. Rosemary, yeah, well, it, I, I, I would like to thank you. Uh, did you did you want to finish something? Finish saying that? Uh, no, just as you say it. it uh, it touched my heart again of who he really was. 
yes, that was that was a great gift and his spiritual life as well to share that journey. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, and so are you. And and I'm going to put you on hold here because a person's coming up that has a question. So just stand by, a moment, okay, Rosemary? Let's see if I can do this. Hello. Hi, hi, George. How are you? Oh, enjoying life. And uh, what about you? I, I as well. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. How may I yes, help you? Sorry, huh? I uh, well a lot. You can help me a lot because I'm looking about uh, in the uh, internet uh, yourself in the Kundalini uh, about um, uh, safe to be safe. Uh, I'm trying to to get in communication with uh, Kundalini, but I uh, sometimes I've been feeling like. Uh, uh, I cannot sleep. Uh, some strange things, no? So tell I me, would like me, to know. Tell me what some of the other strange things are. Oh, like uh, looking like uh, lights and uh, uh, like uh, lights, you know? Some like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I want to know, uh, well, how get in control because I feel uh, uh, losing the control maybe maybe losing the control and I would like to know uh, how to be safe uh, this uh, how wake up the Kundalini and be safe okay all right well let's there's two different things here uh, I think that uh, the, the very fact that you started to even look at the kundalini as a possible uh, cause of your symptoms has already embarked you on a kundalini journey, okay? And I'm going to suggest the safety protocols for you. And so, uh, George, if you go to kundalini awakening systems one dot com and you look uh-huh. at the left, you look at the left hand margin and, and go to the safeties. Okay, this Kundalini Awakening. Systems, the number one, dot com. Numeral one, dot com. So it's, okay. <laughs> I, I'm looking back on that. And just, well, how did I get that? Anyway. Okay. So <laughs> all the other names were taken. <clears throat> so go there. Yes, go there, George, oh. and look at the safety okay. protocols on the left-hand margin. In the last hand. Okay, I'm going to go to Kundalini Awakening Systems number one dot com, and then I'm going to put safety protocol. No, 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 you just, they're, they're right there. They're, it, it, it's a button that you push. Okay. Just a button. You okay. don't have to search for it. Well, uh, I do appreciate your help, and I do appreciate uh, meeting well, just, you. Well, just, 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 just a second. So there's some things that you can do right now. Okay, you can stop oh, okay. drinking. You can stop drinking caffeine if you're drinking caffeine. Are you? Yeah. Well, I eat uh, like uh, the energy drinks. Yeah. You you really want to put those down. Okay. Put those down. That's going to cause you to fear. Okay. That's going to cause you to fear. Oh, and I'd okay. like to say I, just just a second here, George. Uh, this is to Rosemary. This is from. Uh, uh, oh, Fashi is telling everybody hello. He's a little late. And then uh, Tim Ashworth is, is saying, thanks for your story, Rosemary. And Kristen Harris is also saying, thank you, Rosemary. So I will add my voice to the chorus. Thank you, dear Rosemary. And she is live. She is listening. She's She's in another room of the house right now so that, you know, we don't get an echo in here. Now, George, getting back to you, though, yeah. Do do stop the energy drinks. Do not okay. drink anything with caffeine or artificial okay. Okay. sugars. Those energy drink, and I know why you drink them. You know, I I can totally understand why anybody would because it gives you energy. Yeah, and wake up. <laughs> right, right. But I but I suggest that you don't want that kind of energy and the kind of damage that it's doing to your pancreas, and the kind of damage that it's going to do to to you as you begin to investigate 
uh, some of the levels of, of uh, expansion that the Kundalini can bring. I don't think it's accidental, George, that that you are experiencing this. Okay. Uh, we have a we have okay. a gentleman, okay. gentleman named Bruno Amadori, and uh, uh-huh. entiendes George entiendes español? Yes. yes, yes, yes. Well, there's a website called. Uh, because I don't get Spanish too well. Uh, it's called. Uh, um, it's a. Pay- Are you on Facebook? No, I'm not. Okay, it's it's called Despertando la Kundalini. Okay. 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 It's. Uh, let me read it to you here. I have this really slow computer. So. Yeah, here it is. Uh, Des- despertando uh-huh. la Kundalini. Despertando la Kundalini. Oh, okay, e- okay. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Es yeah. e- e- e un mundo donde la Kundalini es cada uh, vez más activa. Es de vital uh-huh. importancia estar informa- informado. Este grupo, okay. uh-huh, este grupo ha sido creado con el fin de compartir los artículos de Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com creados por Crisim uh, traducidos al español. And I would like to thank Bruno Amadori and his his uh his uh I'm looking for her here. And, and his and his accomplice, they do they 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 translate the page. Okay. And, uh, that this was this is uh this is on Facebook though, and so I just kind of you may mm-hmm. you may want to join Facebook and maybe just no join it for, that, for that one reason. Okay. Yeah. No problem. And, then, and I will also invite you to uh, to come to Kundalini Awakening uh, exclamation point. On Facebook, okay. and that's 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 an English group. So uh-huh. this, this this can give you an opportunity to to work with other people and to see what other people are doing. And you know, within this understanding, uh, you kind of begin to put together what is occurring for you and what you need to do. And you did mention that you wanted to have it activated. And uh, if you can make it to Ireland by Friday and do it this weekend, then I'm more than happy to to bring you into that. Uh, and if that's something that you would like to do, then you can contact uh, Amelia Santara and and uh, and uh, at uh, Kundalini Matters at Gmail dot com. Uh-huh. I would like. Okay. Okay. So here's the thing: is that yes, you're going to start seeing lights. You may hear voices. I'll recommend that you don't say anything about it, okay? Don't tell yeah. people about this. You know, that's yeah. just inviting a problem, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, so practice those safeties. The safeties are a standalone kundalini activation sequence. If your kundalini is already activated, then it's a it's a balancing point, a balancing sequence. And it's very important because kundalini is like walking on the edge of a razor. Good, strong level of balance to be able to walk on the edge of a razor, wouldn't you say, George? Yeah, yeah, it, it is that way. The other, so as you take out the caffeine and those sugars, mm-hmm. uh, what's going to happen is you're going to lose levels of fear. Okay. Uh, Fear is what can develop because you you may nobody's prepared to have Kundalini really. It's certainly not in the West. I don't know about the uh the folks in the Himalayas, but uh in the West, very few of us yeah. are prepared to have Kundalini. I thought, you know, when when I finally found out what it was for me, I was kinda of, Oh, this is Kundalini, the one thing I've been trying to avoid. Uh mm-hmm. Even with all of my of, of my uh, education and, and and experience with this, it still uh, would surprise me 
It still yeah, would yeah, it is. Me. It is. Um, you know, a lot of pe- a lot of people that they uh, begin to feel these uh, things. Maybe they they go to the, the the mistake to go to the psychiatry, and they yeah. give drugs to them. That that mistake yeah. totally because I is psychology, and my wife too. My wife is a psychologist. So we we see that all a lot of the things that you feel in, a lot of people feel, and they go to see uh, by mistake a psychiatry, and they give drugs to them, and they they win them, you know. Yeah, so, no, I, I I agree, and 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 I would like to 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 give my compliments to both you and your wife for uh-huh. for being in a in a healing pr- profession in a helpful and consider it kind profession, and I hope that is, is working well for both of you. Yes, yes, it, it does. And uh, uh, with this, we can learn a lot because a lot of people that um, we we see, they have the symptoms, that kind of symptoms, you know? So yeah, we can, exactly. we can uh, well, we can do a lot with, with this, you know? So knowing you, a you, lot, knowing you, all, you can, you can do a lot with it, but you can't do a lot with drugs in the Kundalini. No, you know, certain, no, no. Certain, yeah, you know, SSRI, selected serotonin reuptake inhibitors, are not a real positive chemical engagement with the Kundalini. Yeah, I, yeah, you know? I, I agree with you. Well, George, I, you know, I just want to say thank you uh, for for calling in, and and I do look forward to seeing you if you wish, on Facebook, or if you wish to to contact me privately, my email is K and then F K, as K. in, yeah, K as in Kundalini, F as in Frank, okay, okay. I as in iPad, uh, uh-huh. R as in uh-huh. Raymond, E as in Equator, F-O-R, so that's for all. So Kundal, uh, K fire for all at yahoo.com. Okay, okay. K, K fire, fire for all, for all. Um, at yahoo dot com, and that's one word, all one word. Okay, it's not K space fire space. That's just all one word. Okay, so okay. K fire for all dot com uh, at yahoo dot com. Oh, Yahoo, Yahoo. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hey, I look, I I look forward to to uh, communicating more with you, George. Yeah, uh, my pleasure, and I will uh, need communication in this uh, situation. Well, you have it. You have it. Thank you. you Thank you very much, and uh, God bless you for being there doing this, because uh, nobody does it. I've been looking for the Kundalini, and no, nobody has the information you have. I know, I know, and, and I've looked myself as well. <laughs> I found that out. Yeah. That I feel kind of strange about all that, but I'm just not going to stop. I'm going to keep going with it. And, uh, thank and, you. And, thank and, you. And, and blessings to you, my friend. Thank you for calling. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Have a beautiful uh, day. I'm just going to put you on hold so that you can continue to listen, okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, looks like we have a few callers here, so I'll just let Centara handle this. So, Okay, so so as as we are searching and as we are responding to the guidance that the Kundalini is giving us, we don't know what that guidance is. We don't know what to call it. We, our ego doesn't know how to handle it. It's like, how come I just feel like I need to, and say in, in uh, Rosemary's case, why do I feel like I all of a sudden need to become a nun or a priest or a policeman or a scientist or whatever? How is it that I'm all of a sudden beginning to want to do this? And if it's a kundalini awakening equation, it won't matter whether you have the answer or not. You'll have to do it. You'll have to to participate in the way that the kundalini guidance wants you to participate. Rosemary had no real choice. She had to become a nun. Think about it. You're 16 years old. And and all of a sudden, oh, boom, I feel like I need to join this, this spiritual community. Okay. 
out of the blue. Kundalini can reach right into you, see what you have, see what you need, and provide both. Okay, if you don't have it, it'll get it for you. If you if you need it, then it'll get it for you. And and need need it means need you know, this person needs to, to balance that karma. This person needs to receive more love in their life. And so certain uh, uh manipulations will be given that allow a person to find those objectives within the life path that they're walking. Uh uh, Santara, how how are things going with our callers? Hi, Prism. I was just about to tell you that there is a person waiting to speak with you with a question from the UK. Pushing you through Very now. Good. Thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, hello. Welcome. Hi, this is Anand Mahavatra from the UK. Mahab, Mahav, say that again. <laughs> Mahapatra. You can spell it M-A. Mahapatra. Oh, fantastic. And what is, You're what good is, what is that? What, is, <laughs> what does that mean in Sanskrit? I know what it means, but what are the uh, the other people don't know? What does that mean? Big father or something? Big father. That's right. Mahapatra. Hi. So I, I, I recognize you. Yeah. How are you? It's nice to nice to talk. I'm to you. not doing so well at the moment. I haven't slept in a couple of days, so. <laughs> well, you actually haven't been following my advice either. So I've been trying people? to, but I've been doing the safeties, but not very well. Okay. All right. So the scenarios, uh, everybody, uh, this is this is uh, Mr. Mahapatra, and, I, and he's 18, and, and uh, he's living in the U.K., and uh, he's been kind of vacillating on whether he wants to go to the uh, seminar or not. And yeah. uh, what's, your, what's your question, my friend? How may I help you? I have about 20 questions, but I'll start off with okay. them in order of priority. Um, I'll give some background to the most recent history. I haven't uh, slept for... I've, well, I've slept for about eight hours in the last three days. Okay, is that the first question? <laughs> That's the first question. Why am I sleeping for eight hours? What does sleeping have to do with anything? Oh, sleeping has a lot to do with everything. Uh, yeah. Sleeping has... Sleeping has a lot to do with uh, with dream guidance, uh, with uh, with removing the uh, the toxic, the toxic uh, residues. Uh, residues. Oh. Billy, I've not heard of toxic residues before. Could you explain what they are? Can you put your headphones you put your back on? Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Wait, let me put the volume down again. Does it hurt? Sure, sure. Okay. 50, I think. Of course, if I don't think... Yeah, I didn't think of that. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so... you saying? The toxic residues uh, can come from uh, responses that we've had to, to difficult choices we've had to make, uh, grudges, uh, unforgiveness, um, lack of... Uh, uh, ah, wellness. okay. Yeah. It, it can also, right. in your case, because... That fits, yeah. In your case, I think that you're also in a tremendous level of resistance. Oh, man, the, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so as this resistance manifests, it, it can really, really mess up your life. I, I, yeah, everybody, yeah. You're, you're hearing a telephone. I'm not going to answer it. It'll stop ringing in a few seconds. It's a message phone. Uh, yeah. When you go into resistance... Mahapatra, uh, you you are basically courting a very painful experience. Uh, yeah, but but not to the point that you can't find help. I mean, let's let's see what happened to you. I mean, you you know you go into resistance and it's now and and you're suffering and you're suffering and you're suffering and yet at the same time you're looking for help. You're looking for assistance. You're looking for information. Right. That one thing you said about toxic residue, would you mind if we went, go back to it for a second? Because I sure. think it fits okay. in my kind of system. Um, because when I sleep, I don't sleep very well. I never have. Some days I'll sleep for 12 hours a day. Some days I won't sleep at all. So there's some sort of cycle there, I think. Well, and I think uh, I, I think that you're in the middle of a transformation that you're resisting. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, and, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and as you, as, as you're, 
transformation continues, the Kundalini is trying to get your attention. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, no, okay. yeah, I've heard it. So yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's take out the sleep. Let's see what he does with that. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, so that's how it's going to affect your sleep. Now, now, even if you're not resisting, Kundalini can have very definitive uh, interaction with whether or not you sleep, whether or not you need to sleep. Let me give you an example. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, yesterday at this time, at ex- almost precisely this time, 4:05 p.m. on the West Coast, I was yeah. in the Grand Canyon. I was in the Grand Canyon, Arizona. Awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's about. It's a long. It's a long, long, very long ways away. If you look at Google Earth, you'll see how far live? it is. I live in uh, Northern California, Santa Rosa. And, and where? So Grand Canyon. It's well, well over a, a thousand miles round trip. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh huh. And I. You know, yesterday this time I was in uh, the Grand Canyon and I drove with Rosemary all the uh, way back. Yeah. All the way Who's back. Rosemary? It took about 13, 14 hours. Okay. I took two I took two breaks. One break was completely controlled by the Kundalini. Okay. I yeah. I pulled over. I said I said, "You know, Rosemary, I'm going to have to shut my eyes for a few minutes here." And uh, so we pulled over. I shut my eyes for eight minutes. I know what you mean. I, I know. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I woke up and I was so refreshed and ready to Buzzing go. Buzzing and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so oh, you're welcome, Michelle. You're welcome. She's saying thanks, Chris. Some great show. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Who so is yeah. The Kundalini? So, so your Kundalini, your Kundalini will be in charge of how you sleep and even if you sleep. And the thing is, is, is I really want you to begin to surrender to the Kundalini. And, and I would suggest that you go to this seminar. Problem is, I haven't been sleeping very well at all. And I'm having mania and Fine. things. So if you have mania? You yeah, have yeah. Any mania? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. How, does that, how is that manifesting, if you don't mind saying? I put on really loud music and dance to it really viciously, like really like rap along and dance and whatever. Hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't call that mania. <laughs> I would call that fun. Um, I my parents say it's mania. Well, yeah, they're gonna say it because they're not experiencing what you're having. Um, yeah, true. So I, you know, I will I will suggest that you uh, that you do that. Maybe do it away from your folks so they don't get. You know, pressure. I'm difficult. We're a small house, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't see that as a problem. I don't see that's that's actually a, a positive response to your Kundalini. Uh, oh. uh, what, what's your first name again? I'm sorry. Anand. 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 Okay. So Anand, I think that's a very positive response, and I'll I'll yeah. suggest that you continue to do that. So so you're saying it's okay to rap to like Kanye West and Jay Z, and it's that's well, an okay. Thing you know. To there's there's certainly not my choices in in musicians, but uh, yeah, we we have different musical tastes, obviously. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. And so, and so if 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 they're saying po- if you can find rap lyrics that are of a say more positive nature, I would think they that are would positive, be a though, because better. They're yeah, fine. I don't fine, listen. Fine. Yeah. If it's positive, it's good then. And yeah, I would suggest yeah. that you continue to do that. The other thing, thing, and I will I will suggest that you dance till you drop. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I pant at the end. I'm like, blah. So. No, I mean, I mean, go beyond panting. I mean, till you drop, until you have to rest. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah. Okay. And this will form a grounding. That. This will form a grounding protocol for what you. What exactly is a grounding protocol? A grounding protocol is what I just described to you. It's a, it's doing an activity that forces your your body into hard levels of physical uh, uh, expression. So like squash these, or running? Or squash, or, squash or tennis running, or cycling. Yeah. Not so much tennis. No, no. Tennis is, is a real stop and go. So is squash. I'm talking about hard work. I'm not talking about, oh, we, you know, we hit a ball over a net or against a wall that we rest. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm talking about hard work. And, uh, yeah, and you do that hard work. You do the hard work. Go to a Go, I, I, in the UK, I'm pretty sure they have them. Go to a uh, like a fitness studio that does uh, yeah. um, that uses the rubber band so in the aerobics. Yeah, there's an aerobics technique that uses a very thick rubber band, and it really, really makes you work hard. 
this uh, morning I did sit ups for um, 26 of them with my brother, and um, I was like, ah, and ah, and would sit ups count? Do 260, and that would count. 260, okay, I'll try to do that within the next week. <laughs> <laughs> I won't manage so, yeah, it, but yeah. it's, it's a worthy game. But yeah, and and do and do about a hundred push-ups. I, I have my female students do these things. Let me, yeah, let me, I'm, let, I'm let weird. Me, I have me hang, on, of, hang on, hang on. I'm going to bring Santara on. She's going to describe some of the uh, some of the exercises I have her do. Santara, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Chris. And I have such a bad fusion when it comes to this. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> Tell 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 Anand and, and the listeners about some of the exercises I may have you do. Okay, well, Chrism really pushes me on these things to to beyond what I am capable of doing, but I I try I do them. So I do sit ups, and How many? he could give me to, he could give me to do a hundred sit ups. A hundred sit ups. And, I cannot do that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't either. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, I know what so you mean. that's not the point. I have to, yeah. And also, I am unable myself to do the press-ups, but I do um, the best. I do a revised, what's the word, um, an adapted press-up. Um, the the, the also, easy version. Yeah, I, easy. I can do the easy version. I can't do proper version. Well, if you can do it, you probably need to not do it. And if you can do the hard one, you see, that's the one that you need to do. And I can on. do three of I them, physically, but... I can How do many three. would you do? Three. So, so I would have him do twelve. Twelve. Okay. Easily. Okay. Yeah, I can yeah. do. I can probably do about I can't, four or five. I can't do more than twenty sit-ups. Um, thirty at the very max. Thirty for me as well. I can do a couple of press-ups, but after a while my things just break. So. Um, what, what else yeah. do I but have you point, do? Point, I, mean, I have to keep going. You know, sorry, cousin. Tell, so, tell some of the other exercises. You have me. You have me doing a very um, intense one at one stage, but I haven't been doing that for a while, and it's blotted from my memory. <laughs> um, you have me doing walking. You have me doing star jumps. Star jumps. Uh, I do star jumps. Have, I do star jumps when I walk. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I can't remember how many. Um, I probably do. Well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Uh, Finish take here. this into the into the vector that that I've been actually trying to put it into. I will I will have a student do some fairly strong athletic exercises. I will have them go in, into the gardening, and I will have them do some strong gardening. Uh, yeah. I will have them jump into a a cold cold river and stay underwater before, for a I've certain that, amount of yeah. seconds. Oh, oh yeah. you have had me do that. Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, and absolutely. I have cold baths. The river's different, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So, I read somewhere so, that you said, yeah. So, so Anand, I, I think it's very important for you to stop resisting. Yeah, okay. If you can stop resisting and stop drinking caffeine or, or, or artificial sugars... I don't have coffee because I go hyper with coffee, but yeah. Do you do, you do tea? Do you do black tea? Um, my mum's very keen on me drinking tea, but I don't like tea, so... Don't <laughs> don't drink the black tea, yeah, don't drink the black tea. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's very good, that's very good. So you're not having a lot of caffeine interaction. So yeah. the scenario is, is for you to ground, I'm suggesting you do some very, very strong physical exercises. Well, I did, gardening, I did gardening at 4 to 5. Then I went on a walk with my dog from 5 to 6. Then I dance for now. So, um, is that enough? Well, what I would I like I like that I like the walking the dog, but I'd like you to dance for three hours. Okay, I'll do that immediately. <laughs> as soon as we hang up. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, my car is coming the, on. Yeah. But but the the scenario is is what you're doing when you're dancing that hard is that you're putting the body into a level of stress that allows <laughs> that allows the the kundalini to filtrate itself into you, okay? But it also allows you to ground yourself within that, within right. that so, exercise. So, so I see. So one thing is, one. the first thing is Kundalini is going through me, and the second thing is I am going through the Kundalini. Would that make sense? 
I would just say that the Kundalini is going through you, and you are experiencing Kundalini by virtue of that. What about my my? What do I do? You stop resisting. Okay. Yeah. You let it come, and and and, okay. and here's the thing. Here's the thing because your parents know about this now, right? They pretend to know, but they don't believe in it. Right. They Hindu, right. So, so yeah. right. I understand. I understand. So. Uh, my dad does. And My mom does. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. I'm glad at least half of them do. The scenario, though, is is that as you surrender into this, more phenomena is going to occur. Yeah. And yeah. that more phenomena is what I'm going to give the reason why I'll I have a very, to... very important question, actually, uh, which I, I'm sorry to kind of butt in, but um, I didn't sleep over the last week. My best friend stopped sleeping. And one of my, one of the friends, I'm, I'm, um, new friends I have, has stopped sleeping, and she's sick as well, and I'm really worried I might be doing something. No, I don't, I don't no. necessarily see that, um, uh, because you have this energy that you have a strong expression of it, uh, that alone may be enough to convince them on a, on a psychological programming level to, to emulate your behavior, but I don't think it's the Kundalini reaching out to them. Okay, that's actually quite a big relief. Thank you. Oh, you're you're very welcome. Yeah, yeah. But uh, do your best. Do your best to keep yourself engaged. Keep yourself working hard, and then okay. follow the safeties completely. Don't just do them halfway. Okay. And don't just do them once. Do okay, them yeah. every day. Every day every for day, you. Yeah. yeah. Well, every day or twice a day or three times a day. Or? Well, I More have some, some some people I have do twice a day, some people three times a day. Uh, Rosemary was doing her safeties three times a day and doing them uh, well. I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. You know. Well, don't do the five Tibetans three times a day for you, though. Do uh, everything what, else. What, what are the five Tibetans and what are the safeties? Five Tibetans are a form of Tibetan vertical yoga. Okay, uh, yeah. Kundalini, Kundalini is a vertical source, and so yeah, 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 it, yeah. It, it likes the vertical yoga. Um, yeah, and the safeties, the safeties, if you read the safeties, well, they're fairly self-explanatory. Okay, I've read them, but I don't fully understand the kind of... Kind what of, um, question do you have about them? Uh, well, I'll just search it up on my internet. Safeties, Kundalini, Awakening Systems 1. Uh, sorry, one second. Um, yeah, so tongue up, eyes down. Fingers, I do this all day long uh, pretty much. Uh, 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 tongue up, eyes up. Oh, sorry, sorry, I I thought Not up and then down. thought down. Sorry, that's the worst thing I could do. Fingers in the kind of thing that you showed me on the video. On the YouTube video? Uh, I've done over 200 of them. Which one are you referring to? Uh, the one on the on the page, uh, on the um, safety page. You put your hands together like this. Um, and um, yeah, I got that one. Water, I drink about five liters a day. First, five I mean, liters? So, uh, I mean, okay. seriously, a lot. I have like diabetes or something, I think. Um, food choices is okay. Forgiveness, recapitulation, inner joy, trust, honesty. Okay, yeah, I think I get now, the rest now. of them. Okay, so I, I want you to go ahead and, and, and read that and, and really begin to practice them seriously because I'll tell you what, Anand, this yeah, yeah, isn't going to get... This isn't going to get better if you continue to resist. Okay, yeah. Okay. I want you. Well, I won't. I, I don't want to poke fear at you, but I don't want yeah. you. Uh, I don't want you to have a lot of fear over this. I want you to be grateful for having this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never good to be fearful. Yeah, <laughs> I could hear the sincerity in your voice there. It's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so okay. Do you have any other questions I can help you with? Um, well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I'll leave it at that. Okay, that's fine. All right, very good then, very good. Okay. But thank okay. you for calling. Thank you. Sure, okay. Sure. okay. Right. right. Okay, and if anybody else has a, a, a question that they would like to ask, I'm going to try to, to – um, I'm going to give you the number here. It's uh, area code 347, and that's a U United States area code 347. And then nine three four zero zero two six three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. 
So if anybody else has a question that they'd like to, to ask, please do. Welcome back, Michelle. I see that you did not have that meeting. So great, great. And I and I see that uh, Julie's here. Welcome, Julie. Nice to see you. Fashi, nice to see you again. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Michelle is asking, I wonder if there's something in not trying so hard. This is a sincere <laughs> question. Um, <laughs> uh, Michelle, uh, can you tell me, uh, are you talking about yourself in this? Well, so, typing Christian. Yeah. While yeah. Michelle is typing, can I just, it's Diana Martinez is the lady who is helping Bruno with um, trans... Diane Martinez, thank you. Diana, I so apologize for not remembering. I was was frantically searching (laughs) for your name, so I apologize. (laughs) But but I'm thankful to both you and Bruno for doing the the, uh, Despertando la Kundalini. Uh, it's, 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 It's an amazing level of help for people who speak Spanish, and so thank you. Thank you, both of you, for doing that. Um, so, yeah, if anybody else has a question they'd like to ask, 347-934-0026. Uh, it's gonna, I'm going to come back a little bit here to following the guidance that the Kundalini is giving you. And, I, you know, this is amazingly important. And, and yes, Santara, you have something else to say? Oh, I was just going to say about the safeties. I mean, I was just reminded there as Anand was was lifting them out, and he, you know, and he was lifting them, and he said the water and made a comment, and then then when he got down to the forgiveness trust, and he lifted them off so quickly, yeah, 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 and I suppose I'm, I just like to say that those particular ones, not that they're not the physical safeties, the emotional safeties, like the forgiveness and the trust are actually huge. There's something that needs to be um, really looked at and considered and brought into every day. I mean, it's easy to say, I forgive, you know, and we do, but to actually bring our conscious awareness to that in all scenarios from the smallest little thing to the major big forgivenesses that we have to do. You know, it needs to really... Um, in a Kundalini context, expand into every aspect of our lives, forgiveness. Um, and the same with trust. It's easy to say, oh, I trust it, yeah, 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 yeah. But to actually seriously trust it and to consciously trust what's happening, that takes more than maybe we realize to begin with when we read down through the list. So I just wanted to add that. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And it's absolutely true. Uh, and I believe there's a caller waiting for you. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's true. You don't want to you want to take your time with reading these safeties and looking at these safeties. You don't just want to breeze through them. And I'm I'm not suggesting he is, uh, but it, it, I think he was feeling more of the pressure of being on the air and you know wanting to get through the the uh, you know the the conversation a little faster. Um, but I will suggest for everybody who's listening to take their time with the safeties and to take every safety extremely seriously. It's just like, you know, you know, I, I put water in the safeties, the Kundalini actually put water in the safeties, drink lots of water. Um, I didn't even put down, I mean, I, back when I wrote the safeties, when they were written, there's a certain kind of water that, that, um, that is helpful for people, certainly of a grounding nature. And I have not mentioned this before. I wrote about it about three years ago. Yeah, yeah. Who's? Hi, it's Michelle from the chat room, Chrism, and she'd like to expand on her question with you, please. Okay. Michelle, just a moment, just a moment. Just let me finish this thought, okay? Sure. Hello. Sure. Oh, oh, you got a beautiful voice. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> There's a certain type of water that I, I, I stopped writing about because I knew that it was difficult for people to put together. But if you can find rivers, this is how it was given to me to write into the safeties that I didn't do because I knew that people would have a hard time putting it together, especially if they don't live in an environment that supports it. You take spring water and you pour it over clean river stones 
and you let the the energy of the stones or the the grounding nature of the stones themselves uh you let those energies mix the energy of the water and the energy of the stone and then you collect that in a bottle well okay that's great if you happen to have access to river stones but if you don't well then you're up a creek i would suggest that you drink water drink the water don't drink tap water if you're if your community is in, is putting fluoride or other toxic chemicals in it, buy the water if you can afford to. Go to those machines that dispense, you know, uh, R, uh, RO water or carbon carbon filtered water with, uh, you know, with the different uh, cleaning mechanisms that they have. Uh, drink the water. Don't just just because everybody drinks water. It's, it's not an easy thing. It's not just something that you breeze by because your kidneys are going to be starving for it your adrenal glands are going to be starving for it it's hugely important uh yeah uh julie use tap water using a carbon filter i like filters for that uh i like uh anything that will also take away some of the heavy metals that they're putting in so you know whatever you can get as far as that goes and and I would like to to come back to uh, Michelle. Uh oh, are you there? Hello, hello. I hear that beautiful <laughs> that beautiful voice. Oh my gosh, you should be you should be on the radio. I have been actually <laughs> in different in different um, iterations of it. I have been. I'm not surprised. How are you today, Michelle? I'm I'm very good actually. Yeah, I just um actually I actually just wanted to call in and um, just expand on the question that I had, which was um, it sounds a bit cheeky, but I I, I it was a sincere question and um, it's well, been is, my what, personal experience. What does cheeky mm-hmm. mean? <laughs> well, it just sounds like I'm being facetious. You know, oh. if you if you read if you read it out of context, you might think I'm being facetious, but I'm not. No. Uh, can you go um, ahead and ask, rephrase your question, perhaps? Well, I guess from my personal experience and talking to other people, um, you know, I've always been, I've always considered myself a spiritual person, and. Um, and talking to other people, you know, often often what I get in the conversation is, um, you know, I do my yoga and I do this and I do that and, and you know, somehow it's still not working for me. I'm still, my kundalini is still not um, awakened. I'm, I'm not feeling enlightened. And and it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's a... Um, it's a funny thing, like you said. It's 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 a very fine edged sword that you walk on, and there is a gentleness and um, a peace in that. And um, it's not necessarily a pushing or a um, having to strive for something. Like you said earlier, it, it's something that I think comes to you when you're ready. Um, and even in all, I think we're we're constantly spiritually awakening. It's just. Our timeline and the divine timeline could be very different. And, um, yeah, so I think people who are sort of pushing all the time, you know, how do I get this? How do I do this? It's a little bit maybe missing the point of it um, and maybe not... um, And and I'm I'm not criticizing anybody's path. I'm just saying that sometimes the not doing is you know, might be actually part of the answer. You know, well, the uh, not pushing so and the not resisting and the not, you know, and just oh, right. letting Def- things definitely, happen. De- yeah. Definitely not uh, resisting. But sometimes they're guided to do things that they don't understand that they need to do or they they feel they need to do something and they're doing it, but they don't know why they're doing it. And And now if taking the example that you've given... Uh, if a person is pushing and pushing and pushing and trying to get the kundalini, well, there is a path of kundalini awakening that comes to those who who ask, and yeah. that push that pushing is a form of asking. And what will occur typically for those folks is that they will get activated. 
it won't be the awakening. It will be the activation that can lead into an awakening. But the, one of the, one of the uh, problems that I think people are running into is they're trying to use current practices that espouse kundalini but don't really give the kundalini. Okay, so let me, let me give you an example yeah. of that. Kundalini yoga is a great example of that. They say the word kundalini. They espouse the kundalini. And it's a wonderful system. Don't get me wrong. I like kundalini yoga. I think it's great. But it's not going to give you the kundalini because it has the name in the title. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So, so people, people will try to get that. And, and, and I understand why. Because, you know, it's hard to find information on the kundalini. As, as George mentioned earlier. It's very difficult to find information on the kundalini. And so a person looking through the phone book or through the Internet might go, oh, okay, kundalini yoga. You must be able to get it from that. And you can. You can get it from kundalini yoga sometimes. But it's not a guarantee at all. Mm. Um, with, with pushing, I think pushing is okay to a certain degree. Um, Within the safety protocols, I push people to forgive. I push people mm-hmm. to be tolerant. I push people to give up certain dietary measures. I, I push people into certain behaviors that, that, that the Kundalini uh, is very, very uh, attracted to, such as forgiveness, tolerance, truthfulness, honesty, uh, diligence, discipline, practice. These things the Kundalini is very happy for. But it also will give you that level of serenity that you're talking about, Michelle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It will give you that level of serenity, that level of peace. It, it will give you that level of inner stillness. Now, this is from a person who, who, is, who has the kundalini and is, is working with the kundalini, and this person is not resisting, and so they're having that, that serenity. They're having that peacefulness. But those mm. who are those who are resisting are not going to have that peace. Typically, they're not going to have what it is that you're talking about. They're, you know, a lot of the folks that are going to call up to me here are going to have problems with the Kundalini rather than having a great time with it. <laughs> but you, yeah. you bring you bring up an excellent point, Michelle. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go on. I'm going to say it right now. By far. The majority of phenomena and experience that I've experienced from Kundalini has been positive and yeah. loving and joyful and blissful mm. and ecstatic mm. and beautiful and absorptive and, and, you know, with serenity and with love and with all of the... This is the whole reason we're even doing this show. Yeah. I mean, my, my personal journey to... I, I have never called it a Kundalini awakening, but talking about, but I've read about it and, and I've you know listened to what you have to say and and talked to others about it. And um, on reflection, I guess you know this is my has been my experience. But for me, it was I mean it's been a very long journey. But when and you're right, I asked, I did ask for it, and but before I. <laughs> When, and I and I was um, um, activated, but when I became activated, you know, I had to go through some very very difficult um, uh, um, experiences. Experiences um, and and go into myself quite quite deeply and and face things that I haven't faced for many 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 years before I could get to the point. Where now I'm, I feel like it's flowing through me, um, and now it's extremely positive, and I feel wonderful every day, and and you know you I'm see, just so did, excited. You, you, yeah, you did. You but did I all think, the hard work first. You did the work first, my dear. Yeah, but I think what what I'm trying to say is that I think a lot of people, um, and this is certainly something that I tr- I did was I I tried to <laughs> I, I tried not to do the hard work. 
I tried to get away from doing the hard work and go straight to the to the nirvana. <laughs> you know, what's my fast track to the nirvana? But I, I don't think there is. It's a personal journey. It's a personal relationship, and and each person has to find what that is for themselves. And that pushing well, that I'm talking about is a is a it's a resistance to um, just going with what what is for now, um, and and delving into that first, and then allowing. Well, yeah. What, you, what, you're, what you're not allowing other people to experience is what you experienced. You're taking that out of the equation, and it doesn't. You, you don't get to take that out of the equation. You have to do the hard work. You have to do the inner work. You get to go inside, yeah. and, you, and you get to see all the, 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 the beauty and the ugliness that has been collected there throughout your lifetime. But you have to go there. You don't get to That's go, right. oh, I don't want to do that part. I just want to That's go straight right. to Nirvana. It's not going to let you do that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. And, that's, and, that's, and so, been my, that's been my experience. I mean, I can only talk about what I, what's happened for me. And um, I honor but, you. I honor yeah, you for that. Yeah, I think that's yeah, great. Yeah. But I, I completely agree with what you're saying. So, yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, think it, that, uh, it, it that, feels that, right. That, the fact that the fact to, to, to hear your voice and to, and to feel your presence is 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 really I feel a a an invitation for people to do what you did and to receive what you have received. Mm. So, you know, I I also agree with you, and I also agree with what you had to do and what what I had to do very similar things and and it's it's difficult work. It's you know. Not everybody has really clean karma when the kundalini comes. You yeah. know, sometimes it's a fairly messy karmic uh, uh, menu. And yeah. so, you know, with that in mind, uh, people will not have it the same way you did or the same way I did. That's you know, they'll right, have, yeah. They'll have different manifestations, and some of them will be very, very, very powerful, but it's just for them, and it's yeah. from their kundalini. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I guess that yeah. yeah, and I guess that's my point. I just wanted to make that point that it is such a personal journey, and to be open to that and to be able to actually see it, um, you know, requires a bit of fine tuning as well. To be able to notice the signs that you're receiving that are just for you about, you know, that that also that requires a, a certain amount of refinement and tuning, and um, and it is such a personal journey, and I, I, you know, I wouldn't discredit anybody's journey with that. So that's why my question was originally, you know, is there something, you know, we don't need to necessarily push or certain or necessarily do certain things. Absolutely, you know, we can take we can take guidance about what works for others, but in at the end of the day, it needs to come from from yourself. And I've found that in all aspects of my life, food, everything, I know what feels right for me, what works for me, but it's taken me a long time to be able to listen to that, to tune in, um, and a lot of practice. And so what, what works for me in terms of food is not necessarily what works for somebody else, um, but I know how my body responds and, and what it needs. And, you know, I just listen, it's just, I just listen. Um, yeah, it's it's been so it's been life changing, absolutely life changing. And I think you've responded very well, Michelle. I think that uh, that your choices and the decisions you've made, I think, were also guided by the Kundalini. Um, and I think that you were given to push when you had to go in and and uh, and look at some of the issues that needed resolution or or balancing or whatever. And so a certain amount of pushing in, in your equation uh, occurred, uh, mm. but I, I feel that uh, that you have you have done very well with this. And you're right, you know, uh, uh, you know, romaine lettuce is you know somebody else's uh, uh, favorite lettuce, uh, whereas iceberg is somebody else's favorite lettuce. So we're yeah. not all the same. We're not all the same. And and I am not typically an absolutist. Yeah. type of teacher i don't i think i said that at the beginning of the show that i i don't want to you know I, I typically don't like to fall into absolutism 
because mm-hmm. everybody is unique and everybody comes into this with different karma. And because of the yeah. differences in the karma, that's going to affect the differences in how a person's life is lived and the experiences that are received. And that includes, mm-hmm. you know, the, kund- the Kundalini awakening. Uh, I yeah. like, I like your awakening. I want everybody to have your <laughs> awakening. <laughs> Look, I'll just give you one. I'll just uh, share one more little tip that I found. Um, for me, the, um, one of the biggest sort of um, something that tipped me over the edge, I suppose you could say, was um, I got to a point where I, I realized um, I'd done as much work as I could do on my own and I could feel that the glass ceiling was there within me that needed to be sort of broken through. And what I did was I actually decided to go and see a counsellor. But I chose somebody that um, was spiritually minded and aware and had a different kind of model that he worked with um, and extremely open and flexible to my process. And um, that was the catalyst. It, it, when I walked in, he, he told me immediately, you, you're just right, you're, right, you're ready. Uh, he said I could feel that immediately. So... Um, that was extremely beneficial. Extremely beneficial. So that's I'm just a, a little I, Yeah, I'm a little. I'm, I'm a little more leery about that because, uh, you know, sure, if you could, if if you 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 have that uh, accessibility to a psychotherapist or a counselor who even knows of the word Kundalini, right then and there, you're extremely lucky. Yeah, uh, for the most part. Counselors and therapists, uh, you know, of, of many different stripes, will will classify yeah. you and diagnose you with with uh, uh, schizophrenia with positive tendencies towards bipolarism. And this is, I do not recommend people go to counselors to receive that kind of a DX. Well, this wasn't a psychologist or a psych- psychiatrist or or even a psychotherapist. This is a counselor, so but, they don't they work. Can, they, they, can, they, they don't they work that way. They don't. No, they don't diagnose. Are you are you in Australia? Are you in Australia? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, counselors well, they do, here. They, there's no. They don't do diagnoses as such. Yeah. It's it's they a do different. Here in the States. It, yeah, it's a different model of working with people. It's um, it, it, like I say, it's much more about your own personal process. Anyway, the, the point being is that you know sometimes, um, and I know I was guided to him as well. I had no idea. Like, he, I just chose him out of a. <laughs> Out of a box of all sorts of names, and and I was led to him. So um, that was my process, and and it was very helpful. Yeah. The key the key word there is guided. You yeah. were guided by your Kundalini to this man, and so this, yeah. the the Kundalini chose this man. Now, if that's the case for a person, I will always go with what the Kundalini chooses. Yeah. Okay, so for you, yeah. your your Kundalini gave you an excellent resource for for a flesh uh, a positive interaction with a flesh person that that has an idea about Kundalini, and this is what I do too. You know, people come to me and with with you know fairly traumatic Kundalini experiences, and we just begin to to calm that person down. That's what it yeah. is, and that's why we have the show. <laughs> 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 But I think it's very, very. I'm very happy uh, to hear uh, your story and and to to take your tips and your advices that the Kundalini, your Kundalini, has given to you. I think it's been very, very uh, successful for you, and I think it will continue to be that way. Hmm. I it will I, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, well, listen, uh, thank you very much for having me on the show. I, I'll, I'll let you, <laughs> I won't take up any more of your time, but it's been, oh, it's no. been a, a lovely discovery. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for participating. You're welcome. I want to say uh, thank you, Michelle, uh, for calling in like that. It's very nice, very nice. And anybody else who wants to call in, we have 15 minutes, and the number is uh, area code 347. Nine three four zero zero two six. So, so let's talk a little bit about you know what Michelle suggested, and she's absolutely correct. You pay attention to your guidance. If your guidance tells you to go see a counselor, then you go see the counselor. And what I mean by guidance, I mean your Kundalini guidance, 
not Dr. So-and-so who lives down the street. Okay? By guidance, and, and the Kundalini led her to a therapist or counselor. And uh, the Kundalini in her already knew what that counselor knew and how he would approach her with regards to her kundalini and you know and obviously it was in a very positive setting and uh this is something that i would i would totally agree with uh i would not agree with uh say she had met this counselor at lunch and he said oh yeah i heard about kundalini i can help you with that you know oh well do you have kundalini no <laughs> then i'm going to have a problem with 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 somebody coming uh, with somebody giving you advice on your kundalini without having it themselves. There's an issue with that. Now, I understand that not everybody that gives you advice about your kundalini that doesn't have it is, is uh, you know, going to give you bad advice. I'm not trying to be absolutist, but I am trying to help you discern and give you uh, tools of measurement for discernment in who will be the most appropriate person to give you advice about something that they don't have. Okay? And it's a, it's kind of become a, a, a something that I say uh, in a few of these shows, is you don't take advice about your kundalini from people who don't have it. Unless your kundalini guides you to that person. So, so there's the caveat. And, and I'm going to thank Michelle... Herlick for that caveat. Uh, uh, unless the Kundalini guides you to do so, and that is an important caveat right there. Is if your Kundalini is guiding you to do it, then they already know who that person is, what they're about, and what they're going to give to you, and it wants you to receive that. It may not be what you expect to receive, however, but it will be what the Kundalini has for you to receive from that individual. So once again, uh, Michelle, thank you. Thank you for that, you know, for, for giving an addition to the, <laughs> the advice that I, that I give quite often about not accepting advice from people who don't have the kundalini. And as far as pushing things, I'm going to suggest that we all are going to have to push, but we're all also going to be given opportunities for rest and surrender. Rest and, and, and serenity. Uh, calmness and stillness and beauty and joy. I go outside and I just I look at the ground and I can just get lost in the in the rocks and the and the, the in the life and the the plants and the flowers and you can just stare at that and just go into that. It's very very beautiful. Life here is extremely beautiful and harsh at the same time because it's a predatory world. Uh, for the most part. Um, so if there's anybody else that has a question, we have 11 minutes left, and the number is United States, area code 347-934-0026. And um, at this point, uh, Centara, would you give your announcement? Yes, I will, Chris. I'm a bit slow on the, the mute button. Sorry about that. And um, first of all, thank you to Michelle. Can you hear me? Yes, you're coming oh. in nicely. Oh, yeah. Thank you to Michelle. That's, I enjoyed listening to what you had to say, Michelle. Thank you. Um, let me see. Okay, so let me begin by telling you again about the seminar. And um, if Anand is still listening, Anand, um, maybe consider again coming to, to see us in Ireland. It's a short journey over from the UK. And... Um, the seminar is starting this weekend. It begins on Friday at 4 p.m. And um, it goes right through until Sunday. And Sorry, it begins this Friday at 7 p.m. And it goes right through until Sunday. And it finishes at 4 o'clock. Um, I'll give you the address that you can write to. If you've got any questions at all, if you have any interest in attending, please do get in contact with me and we can have a communication about it. Um, my email address is kundalinimatters at gmail.com and my phone number is 
0035386029-7676. And that's next weekend, 18th, 19th, and 20th of October, beginning at 7 p.m. on Friday and going right through until Sunday at 4 p.m. And if you're going to fly into Dublin Airport, um, I will collect you at Dublin Airport and bring you to the venue, which is just, it's about 30 minutes from the airport. So again, write me on Kundalini Matters at gmail.com and I can answer any questions you have and we can discuss any aspect of the seminar that you might be interested in. Um, I'd also like to give you again to the website you can go to if you would like to make a donation to support the work that PRISM does. And this website is www. Oh, I've gone blank. www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com And as I say, up in the right-hand corner of that page, you will find the donate button. And as always, there's no pressure whatsoever on anybody to make a donation. I just make these announcements every week so that people are aware that the donate button is there and that donations is how Chrism can continue to do the work that he does. And if you're in a position to donate, then it is gratefully received. So that is, again, www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. Thank you, Samara. Thank you, Thank you, Santara. And thank you, everybody who has listened. Um, Celestial Rubies, Fasci, guess once. 661-2285-2493-2814, Michelle Ehrlich, Tim Ashworth, and Chris Harris. Uh, thank you for, for, for staying throughout the entire show a long time. And also thank you for all the callers who called in. Thank you, Rosemary, uh, for your wonderful interview. Thank you, Michelle, for your wonderful words. And everybody who called in, thank you, Santara. Thank you to your family, John, Jonathan, uh, Emma, and all the extended uh, brothers and sisters in the kingdom of Kerry, in the country of Ireland, uh, that I'm going to be seeing quite soon. Um, and I look forward to it. Amazing. It's going to be an amazing experience. And and for those of you who... Uh, <laughs> thank you, Chris. Uh, Chris Harris. Uh, for those of you who can come, do. And for those of you who can't come, then come back to this radio show. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you next week. To uh, Kundalini-based refinement protocols. Uh, no, Chris, I'm not that early for me, although I was getting a good Christian education and family committed to Sunday worship, that kind of practice. But I was, and it was in the Catholic faith, and I was taught by Catholic sisters through grade school and high school, and I realized in high school that that's what God wanted me to do with my life. And I left right after high school, left home, and I was there for 25 years. And I can see things happening along the way that truly were guidance from my kundalini and also that that desire in my heart kept growing. And after 25 years there, I said that something was missing for me. And I wasn't quite sure what it was, and I struggled with leaving because I was I felt at home there. But I did. I left. I had been in education. I taught high school. And several uh, a couple years after I left, I met a uh, dear man in the church pew, and we were married. He has since died. And I continue to work in some ways in my church. And I have always been drawn toward meditation, and I could never really find the the tools or the instruction in that. And that was coming along. And I picked up a local little magazine, and there was an interview there with Chrisom about service. And it was very touching. And I had heard the word kundalini one other time but there was information in that publication on with Irene's number and when this uh, uh, 
seminar was coming in like a couple weeks, and I really had no idea. But I went, and um, it was amazing to me how strong it has been for me. And I really, coming home and coming here, being here with you, Kristen, has been a great blessing. Strengthened and developed and expanded. Refinement is a wonderful word. And I know that this is... I, I feel my feet on the journey. I've always been on the journey, but I feel the ground under me with this work and with your direction and this community. And thank well, you for this opportunity. Oh, you're 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 very welcome. And, and you know the I say this often, but it's I, I say it often, but it's really true. Uh, Kundalini is really uh, the one to be thanked. The divine is the one to be thanked. It is the one who is pretty much. Uh, Giving us the, the 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 directions and the guidance that we need, as I mentioned earlier, from even a an early childhood experience, uh, the divine is guiding us and helping us and bringing us mm-hmm. into yeah you know, a level of of uh, understanding that allows us to make appropriate decisions to help guide us into a more spiritual uh, 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 appreciation and. And uh, Rosemary Michelle is asking, is Kundalini your higher self? And I'm going to suggest it is not within the context that we may understand the higher self to be. It is beyond the higher self. Uh, Unless your understanding of the higher self includes the higher self as being divine, like say the, uh, the in the Huna in the Amakua, uh, if you see your higher self as being that of a of of a divinity, well then yes, the Kundalini is your divinity. It to me, divinity goes far beyond the higher self. The, the even the word self in there, you see what I'm saying? The word higher self, you know that 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 almost has an ego flavor to it. And it's, mm-hmm. I know, I, I know Michelle did not choose the word. That was <laughs> that was going on long before, <laughs> long before we're having this chat. Uh, even pre Kundalini, I would use uh, I would use the the term higher self as well. But Kundalini is your divine self, uh, and the divine self is what will control all aspects of the human person. Whether it's the low self, the middle self, or or the high self in, in the uh, Huna tradition, which you know, low, middle, and high, or in the in, you know, just in the the, the New Age uh, uh, scenario where uh, people like to uh, kind of sidestep the whole divinity issue, and that uh, the, the divine. You know, the people who are more interested in science can be a little bit put off by the idea of divinity. Uh, and and so they'll choose words like higher self. Uh, Michelle says that her understanding is that the higher self is the divine self, the part that sits with the divine and is part of that. Uh, so uh, Kundalini is, is the divine self. Kundalini is the guiding force for a person who has reached that level of refinement allow them to enter into an enlightenment uh, equation that can enter into a a system of ascendancy Uh, this must occur for people in, in order to in order for people to advance and so, you know, frankly, though, I'll be honest with you, I don't care what you call it. You can call it Frank or Ed or Edwina. Uh, as long as, you know, you listen to it and you treat it with respect and and uh, and you and you act on the uh, <laughs> and you act on the the uh, information that it's giving you. That's what really matters to me. Um and and Chris M. Harris says she's going to call it Dave. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> call it Dave. But seriously, uh 
I think that uh, you know, try to avoid the the whole idea of labels. Although with Michelle's question, it's a very appropriate question because a lot of the people who are wrapped up into science, uh, you know, they 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 have a hard time with with uh, with uh, crossing that bridge into divinity. Uh, and, and Michelle says that her experience has been a simultaneous emptying and filling internally. And, and as, as, as we move in to a divine protocol upon our bodies, which means that the, the Kundalini is now an active force upon the body. It is controlling the body. It is doing these things and the individual personality just gets to sit back and ride. It can scream, rant, complain, but it will initially have to to uh, surrender to the will of Kundalini. Now, Rosemary, did you experience any kind of a Kundalini phenomena when you were a nun uh, during prayer or meditation or service to others? No. Mm-mm. What no, kind I, of... I... What, what, what kind more, of phenomena would you experience? Yeah. Well, I would say it was like a busy mind. I, my my prayer time and and the meditation instruction wasn't anywhere near what I have learned since, but it was more reflection about something. It was intellectual, and I would do my best to do everything I was supposed to be doing because that was why I was there. And sometimes that was a little difficult. Um, but it it didn't reach the the mind mindless part, you know, where the even at the uh, just basic uh, meditation where you place your mind on your breath so that your mind is not doing all that stuff that it does when it's uh, wow. doing its thing. I, so I'm very familiar yeah. with the mind, mindless aspect, as you may have uh, observed as we were driving cross country. Mm-hmm. That, that was a joke, but anyway. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. Thank so, you. <laughs> so, uh, within within the the disciplines that you were practicing as a nun, uh, could you know as you look back? Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. Um, uh, This conversation today will be about uh, how you may have been pulled or what may have occurred for a person to even explore the Kundalini, to, to even be able to approach it uh, without knowing what it is. And this happens quite often, actually, and so this is the, the topic of the conversation today. However, I would like to welcome all of you. I'd like to welcome guest 1661 and guest 2285 and Amelia Centara and Rosemary Goliath and and uh, we have a special guest today that we would like to interview, and that is Rosemary. And she will tell a little bit of her story about how she became interested uh, uh, in, in a spiritual life and in, in a life uh, based on refinement towards a spiritual life. Um, and so we'll be uh, interviewing her later on. Uh, before I get started, though, I'd like to go ahead and... and uh, Say hello to Santara. Hello, Santara. Hello, Chrism. Hi, it's good to be here. I've only just arrived and missed uh, what you said before now. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's good to be here anyway, and um, I'm delighted to be here on another Wednesday, and welcome to Rosemary, and I look forward to the interview. Um, I'll just begin by... Um, First of all, telling you where you can go to if you would like to make a donation, listeners, to the work that CRISM does. Um, There is a website, and this is the address, um, www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. 
And if you would like to support Prism, and if you can, in the work that he does, well, then that is the address that you can go to. And on the top right-hand corner, you will find a donate button, and it's very simple to donate after that. I'll give you the address again. That's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And also, I'm going to make my final announcement about the Kundalini Awakening Seminar that is happening at the end of this week in Dublin. It's possibly um, too late for some people to plan if this is their first time hearing this information, although I, I don't believe it's ever too late if somebody is meant to come, well, then they will come. And I will do everything I possibly can to assist you if you're living in Ireland or in the United Kingdom or indeed in any part of Europe. Um, it's a very easy thing to get to the seminar. Please do ask me, you know, contact me if this interests you and we can have a discussion about how to make it possible so i'll give you the information the seminar begins this coming friday on the 18th of october and it starts at 7 p.m and as a group we will be together on friday night all day saturday and we finish on sunday at 4 p.m the venue for the seminar is going to be in county Meath, in a beautiful area the boyne valley the Boyne Valley is um, a very special place in Ireland. Newgrange is one of the places in the Boyne Valley. And another place is Noth and Doth, which sound really strange. But these are very, very ancient monuments and sites from way, way back, even before the period, before the pyramid. And that is where we are going to be having our seminar. And our seminar actually begins on a, a lunar eclipse, which I, I think that is very appropriate. So, if you want to get in contact with me, I'll give you my phone number first, and that is, if you're ringing outside of Ireland, 00353-860297676. That's 00353-860297676. And the email address you can write to is Kundalini Matters at gmail.com. That's K U N D A L I N I M A T T E R S at gmail.com. So, again, next weekend, 18th, 19th, and 20th, I'm looking forward to welcoming Chris to Ireland and to meeting with us at the seminar in County Meath. So, that's it, Chris. I'm looking forward to your arrival and to the show today and to hearing Rosemary. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia, for that fine, the, the fine set of announcements. Uh, I would like to also let people know before we begin that uh, you can get some of this information from the YouTube, which is uh, chrism.kundalini. And uh, if you go to chrism.kundalini, then you'll come to that channel. And I would welcome anybody to, uh, to begin to, to watch some of those videos. Another source that can be had is uh, at www.kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com. And uh, that's the numeral one.com. So kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com. And then go to the articles, read the articles, read the safeties, read the... Uh, I'll read all the information that you can on that website that Glenn Ola has so expertly uh, put into into the uh, onto the web and I would like to thank Glenn Ola for doing that. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and, and get started here. When people Prison? Yes. Hello. May I just say to the people in the chat room if that's okay, I'm not um I don't have a chat Room window open today, so I won't be able to assist with that. And just to let you know as well. Thank you, thank you. I okay. I have a I have a computer here that has its screen kind of coming off, but it, I'm still able to read something on it. And so I have the chat room up, and I have uh, six people, uh, including Tim Ashworth. Hello, Tim. Uh, who are joining with us uh, today. So, And this would be tonight where you are. Uh, thank you, Tim, and all of you that are listening from Europe. 
I, I know it's it's eleven o'clock there in the evening, so so thank you for for making that effort. And uh, I see Tim is typing, so thank you, Tim. Um, all right, here we go. When a person, well, there are certain areas of spiritual draw. Uh, uh, what by that I mean a, a spiritual experience or a spiritual drive that will draw a person into a deep and sometimes lifelong uh, learning and participation in in a spiritual belief system, or um, even if it's a you know, even from a volunteering viewpoint, uh, in some way a person will be driven to help other people. Often, uh, these people will will go into areas such as the church, uh, uh, the any of the any of the various churches from the Hindu to the Catholic to the to the Buddhist. Uh, they all have uh, systems of service that that they give uh, to the people who 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 uh, partake of that belief system, and they give uh, into the populations assistance, food, clothing, shelter, warmth. I mean, you name it. I mean, they're really out there doing their best to help people survive. But not always, and certainly not everyone. I'm, I'm trying to be. Uh, non-absolutist when I make these statements because, you know, everybody is different. But within the context of a spiritual lifetime pursuit, uh, kundalini people, before they activate, uh, will often be drawn into areas of service, into areas that will will really challenge your your uh, your tolerance. <laughs> Really challenge your tolerance. And hello, Chris and Harris. I see you. Nice to see you joining us, Chris and Harris. Uh, it's difficult to tolerate people who are being mean to you, who are being unfair to you, who are being judgmental of you, who are being, uh, in some way, uh, you know, hurtful. And what I want to suggest that if some of you are involved in that right now, and you're deeply spiritual people. Uh, this is not a bad thing. Hello, Michelle. This is not a bad thing. This is a a very positive level of refinement that you're being invited into. Okay, a very positive level of uh, of refinement that allows you to open your heart, open your love uh, to include a person who may not understand the deep connection to oneness and to spirituality that that many of the, the kundalini destined people will have. And I, I say kundalini destined people because they're destined to to have the spinal sweep. They're destined to live a kundalini life which which can be very, very difficult if if a person isn't able to expand themselves into offering and giving assistance to others through the, the many vectors that are offered in our societies, you know, such as churches or, or uh, social groups or, you know, people of that nature. Now, I'm the only one here with a uh, with with a with a chat group. So everybody there on the chat, I see you and I and I and I, I saw your response. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I just want to let you know that I that I do see what what you have done, Michelle and Chris. So, uh, as you enter into these volunteer positions, sometimes and sometimes paid positions, your Kundalini will begin to drive your interest. It will drive your interest in a way that will choose for you the most appropriate position of gifting. Uh, of time and service and love and and patience and tolerance and healing uh, that that would be appropriate for you at this time in your development it doesn't have to to happen when you're you know forty years old or twenty years old or thirty years old or you know it doesn't have to happen if, you know you don't have to be an an elder person to have this happen this will happen 
when it is best for you. This will happen when the kundalini in you has decided that you have reached a certain level of refinement uh, that is effective for you. Hey, uh, the, the folks that are on the chat group, can you write to me and let me know that this sound is, you know, we, we typically will have some sort of a sound quality issue. And if you could write, if you could write to me and let me know if you're hearing this okay. Hello, Adam. Nice to see you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kristen Harris and, and Tim and Michelle. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you, Michelle. It's a little quieter than usual. Oh, let me let me make this adjust. Is this a little bit louder? Yeah. Hello. One, two, three. So, oh, there it goes. <laughs> Okay, okay, I found the setting. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're lovely people. Absolutely lovely people. It was better before. <laughs> uh. Don says, hey, Kruden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, here we are. Okay, all right. So, well, as long as people are hearing it, I'm good with it. So... So we are indeed often drawn into levels of response to society. Even when you're a little kid, uh, you can be drawn into levels of response to society that guide you towards helping other people, that guide you towards being the healer in the group of friends that you may belong to, the healer who is maybe the loner. You know, but but people and animal and and animals and whoever you know they happen to come to this one person. So you don't have to be an adult to have this happen. But uh, you 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 know it can also happen when you are an adult. And and these levels of of helpfulness and consideration are definite markers for refinement and love based service that a person who is pre Kundalini as a as a as a younger person. Uh, as they begin to develop, uh, their refinement markers will begin to, pardon me here, I'm trying to find a place to put all this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, their refinement markers will begin to to cause them to do certain things, to, to practice certain levels of, of love, and 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 helpfulness to other people. Um, this happened to me. This you know this happened to me when I was a little kid. You know I was always looking at the uh, the lost kitty or the uh, you know the friend who was hurting or you know if my if my mother was was having a hard time then of course I would try to go to her and heal her. Uh, these these types of scenarios are, are are you may think that they're common but not everyone is drawn into kundalini refinement parameters, but for those of us who are, it often starts in this way. You have to be challenged, or you, or people around you need to be challenged in order to, to. Um, maybe I'll back this thing off a little bit. Be saying I'm distorted. Uh, in order to to begin. To refine yourself towards a kundalini expression, um, as this expression um, manifests itself, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Some people want to become doctors. Some people will want to become dentists. Uh, <laughs> some people, yeah. Hi, hi, Adam. I see you. And and some people will want to become firemen or policemen. Uh these are all these are all really really helpful areas, but also uh you may want to become a, a spiritual leader or you may want to become a teacher in a in a grade school or things of that nature. These are all refinement markers for kundalini awakening development. Pre-awakening uh refinements that are occurring for a person so that when they reach that level, when the kundalini is saying, okay, watching you, 
as you're a child, watching you as you as you are helpful, watching you as you begin to respond to the stimulus to choose a a a job or a career that is helpful, that is you know someone that can be dependent on. Okay, and uh, you know with this in mind, I would like to introduce. Uh, one of my students, her name is Rosemary Goliath, and Rosemary and I, Rosemary flew out to the ashram three nights ago, I think, yeah, three nights ago, and we left Santa Rosa, actually, we left we left uh, San Francisco, where I picked her up at the airport, and we went uh, into Arizona and into the Grand Canyon and things of that nature, and we've just come back. And uh, she has a very, 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 very interesting uh, life plan that has been given to her through her Kundalini. And uh, I would like to go ahead and bring her on right now. Hello, Rosemary. Hi there, Kristen. Hey, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for for flying out here, and, and it's been it's been a it's been a real treat having you uh, and sharing with you these these beautiful sites of the Grand Canyon and the east side of the Sierras and, uh, you know, these these areas that we have been visiting. Uh, but with regards to this conversation, I would like to, to kind of talk with you again, as we did in the car, about what drove you as an, as an early child to, you know, as, you know, as a younger person, as a, as a you know, like say, a, if you can remember a, an eight or a nine-year-old, what kind of a spiritual life uh, did you have, and was there any indication that that uh, you, that you were entering in? Look at that now, can you see opportunities that you may have missed that would have allowed you to to come into this sooner, or was that just not going to be the case, no matter what? I. It's not to say that it couldn't be. I can think of one particular sister that had something very profound about her, but I never knew what it was. She was uh, one of the musicians in the community, and uh, I would say that about her. And even the saints, uh, the communities of uh, religious men and women, those people that have had and written about their experiences are very, very few. True enough, true enough, true enough. Well, I would like to... uh to personally welcome you among their, among you know, to to be seated with them, Rosemary. Oh my, <laughs> thank you, Chris. And that's um, and, and that's that goes touching. for, well, that goes for a lot of us. Chris and Adam and and uh, I met Chris Harris. She spells her name K R I S M, and then uh, Tim Ashworth and and I would assume Michelle. Although I, I'm 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 not sure that I know Michelle. Although she's like a very wonderful, beautiful person, uh, so yeah, this this doesn't come to everybody. But when it does come to an individual, uh, they mm-hmm. will typically have to act on it, and they will typically be guided through uh, pain, pleasure, interest, disinterest. Uh, their guidance will be assured. But the goal of the guidance may not be understood by the individual. You have mm-hmm. to remember that for the most part, we're working from a, from a, a mindset of ego, uh, mm-hmm. fear of loss and want of gain, uh, uh, my way or the highway, um, uh, I'm the best competitor of them all, um, you know, all the different ego expressions. And so, uh, you know, this this... This may not be called to people who are who are continuing to work in, into from the refinement level of ego control and expression. However, even the Kundalini person will need uh, in their early life to get a good handle on their ego in order to understand and survive in this world. Ego serves a very very positive per- uh, purpose, and and I want people to know that. I don't want people to think that even though I'm saying, okay, it's time to to uh, stop letting the ego control you, even though you know I'm saying that, it doesn't it doesn't diminish the very important work that the ego has done 
for the person uh, earlier in life. It's just like our baby teeth. When we get our baby teeth, uh, it's painful, and, and yet they come in, and, and finally, you know, we're able to chew food, and then they go away. The baby teeth fall out. Well, with Kundalini, I'm going to suggest that your baby teeth, your baby ego teeth, have fallen out, or at least many of them have, shall we say. <laughs> they don't all fall out at the same time. Uh, but uh, from a kundalini perspective, the kundalini person can see that the ego teeth are leaving them one at a time or two at a time, and uh, they're being left with a divine counselor, a divine guidance that has an agenda for them that isn't always what they would have expected in their life. Okay? Uh, these levels of... of uh, of grace are very, very powerful. And these are the levels of grace that will throw your karma at you. These are the levels of guidance from the kundalini, from your divine self, that will say, ah, okay. Uh, 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 let, let's say uh, Santara has this, has this uh, karmic responsibility that she has to deal with in this life in order for her to become uh, of greater service within her divine application of kundalini upon the people around her. And so, well, let's give her this karma right now and see how she does. So the karma is given and then, you know, that then, then, you know, either the person is able to respond at that time or maybe later on. You have to understand that kundalini does not have time constraints the same way that we do. It understands our, our understanding of time, but it doesn't necessarily buy into it because it doesn't have that restraint. Okay, we see time as a linear thing. We see, you know, past, present, future, and with Kundalini, past, present, future don't really apply. It's just a river of of time that allows the five sense person to to proceed upon a life path that that sense to them. They, they can say, okay, past, present, future, and live their life based upon the ideas of past, present, future. Well, when I was four, you know, I burned myself in the campfire, and so uh, now I know not to, to stick my finger in the campfire, and I know in the future I won't do that. Uh, okay. So I'm reading uh, Michelle, right? She said, uh, for me, it has been about developing a relationship with the egoic parts of myself that is compassionate, embracing and understanding. So yes, I don't buy into it so much now. Well, see, there you go. There you go. At first, you know, you have a very good relationship with the ego. And, and the ego is not a bad, evil thing, although it, it, it can become that way. Uh, but it isn't typically, you know, you know, without me slipping into absolutism, isn't typically that way. Um, although it, you know, there there are those aspects of it. Uh, and then yes, 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 you you can see the ego's your inner child, and the inner child has been in charge of the body uh, for most of the time now. And with the kundalini, the kundalini will come along and say, "Ah, little ego child, here, I want you to sit over here." No, I want you to be quiet, and I want you to learn. This is how I am. I am uh, looking at uh, helping the ego to be transformed. You don't. You don't get to obliterate an aspect of yourself. What you do. What you are allowed to do is you're you're allowed to change and transform how you 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 choose what you're going to be uh, giving your attention to. Are you going to give your attention to the ego or are you going to give your attention to the kundalini and that guidance that's coming for you? And so as your process of refinement has continued uh, throughout your life and as the kundalini is beginning to come up in you, any of you, uh, I'm going to suggest that you begin to really look at your spirituality as the new reality for you. 
the new reality, not the only reality, but the new one. And the new reality is going to suggest that there are more than one reality. There are realities that are just scientific. There are realities that are just autistic. There are realities that are just, uh, you know, focused on material gain. There are realities that are just focused on fighting a certain kind of war. You know, we look at uh, General Patton, who fought for the uh, United States uh, during World War II. You know, here was a gentleman that viewed some of his past lives as a, as a warrior, as a soldier. Matter of fact, there's a documented piece of evidence where he's he's uh, overlooking a, a plane, and and he began to remember Roman soldiers uh, fighting, uh, you know. Uh, an adversary and what they did and how they did it and all of this and this is documented and so and so yes this is these at these levels of attention that are given to the person will not necessarily uh dovetail or that's that's an american expression that not not necessarily combine uh perfectly with with what the person has been doing, but it will combine perfectly with what you are to be doing. Uh, the, kun- the, the kundalini will not let the ego stay in control. That's the bottom line. It won't let it stay in control, and it can bring pain to the body if it is, you know, if you're, you're going to be in resistance to what the kundalini wants to have happen. So, uh, with regard to to giving yourself into a spiritual quest for for completion. If you're, you know, giving it to yourself into the into what the Kundalini has given to you as a spiritual quest for completion, then I'm going to ask you to set the ego down and tell it to be quiet and to learn. Um, what Rosemary did is Rosemary responded early on. You know, when she was 16. She answered that call to serve God. Now, I don't know that she knew who God was. I'm sure she knew who she thought God was, what her ego had been trained to believe God was. I'm sure at the the time that she was 16 all the way through the 24 years of service and and uh and uh and study that she that you know, she put into her to her uh ministry, uh you know, she she did very well with that. But It had to stop. And she also answered that call. Think about it. Think about it. Let me bring Rosemary back on here. Rosemary, you're coming back on. Uh, Centaur, if you could do that, because... um, Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Rosemary? Yes. When, when, uh, you know, after, the the, say, the 22nd year, the 21st year, being the nun, uh, when did you start feeling the the urge or the desire that that you needed to move on from this position well it was it was about those two or three years and what i would do is i would think it that it it really was about something else some particular aspect of the community or my work or whatever was seemed to be stirring up and then i would uh, deal with that and I say good because I I really liked being uh, in that role of of church service and as a symbol for God and the sisters that I was part of were a habit even in the later years and uh, so and I I was in community leadership as well so I thought as and it was a time when communities were dwindling and dwindling and I said well that's okay I'll be here and I'll turn out the light and be the last one to bury, to be buried. And that just <laughs> what was intended. But it, it was a stirring and an unsettling and reaching out for help. And then in a number of times in my life, I would say to God, and it was the May of the year that I left, I said, God, I give up. I, I give up. Just show me. Show me what you want me to do here. 
And I really, as you're saying about the ego, just took that out of my ego realm of working and let it be. And then over the next eight or nine months, then it was just really clear. Well, that, what that was, was the... Fine. Can you tell me the uh, the moment of truth and what you were doing when that moment of truth occurred? Well, if I think I was sharing with you about putting shelf paper into the the new building, is that were you referring to that? Yes. Yeah. So this I, I was a teacher, but I lived with a community of sisters who were nurses. And that was part of the hospital building. And so this, this ability, the, um, I was free in the summer because I was finished my teaching and, and I was working in that, uh, the new, the new home and putting shelf paper in. I remember being down on the floor fitting shelf paper in before we put stuff into the, and it just occurred to me that I just didn't want to be there anymore. Just and out of the remember. blue, it's just like, just like, wow, it's like yes. 24, 24 years is enough. <laughs> well, and again, I'm not so sure that it, I, I don't know, this. it was an ability to accept and to see the possibilities of a spiritual life even beyond that structure. And that I yes. had come to know people who had a much, actually, a much stronger spiritual life than I had. And through a 12-step program, and I said, you know, I I didn't need this particular structure for that. So what you're what you're suggesting is that it after 24 years, uh, something within you finally said, okay, it's time to go. Yeah, yeah. And the possibilities. Now how, okay, so how did this turn into a Kundalini quest? Well, I think it was guidance. I'd probably still be there. I'd be back in Pittsburgh, you know, where the community is. Sure. Um, but, but it was, as I said, I met uh, a delightful man sitting in the church pew. And what the gift of that marriage and that relationship was for me was, was a gift all the way and still continues to be. Was it was it a was it also a spiritual gift? Did your husband yes. at the time yes. did he? Uh, okay, all right, very good, very good. Rose, yeah, yeah, I, I, I would like to thank you. Uh, did you did you want to finish something? Finish saying that? Uh, no, just as you say, it it, uh, it touched my heart again of who he really was. Yes, that was that was a great gift and his spiritual life as well to share that journey. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, and so are you. And and I'm going to put you on hold here because a person's coming up that has a question. So just stand by, a moment, okay, Rosemary? Let's see if I can do this. Hello. Hi, hi, George. How are you? Oh, enjoying life. And uh, what about you? I, I as well. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. How may I yes, help you? Yes, I have. I uh, well a lot. You can help me a lot because I'm looking about uh, in the uh, internet uh, yourself in the Kundalini uh, about um, uh, safe to be safe. Uh, I'm trying to to get in communication with uh, Kundalini, but I uh, sometimes I've been feeling like. Uh, uh, I cannot sleep. Uh, some strange things, no. So tell I me, would like me, to know. Tell, tell me what some of the other strange things are. Oh, like uh, looking like uh, lights and uh, uh, like uh, lights, you know, some like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I want to know. Uh, well, how? get in control because I feel uh, uh, losing the control maybe maybe losing the control and I would like to know uh, how to be safe uh, this uh, how wake up the Kundalini and be safe okay all right well let's there's two different things here uh, 
I think that uh, the, the very fact that you've started to even look at the Kundalini as a possible uh, the cause of your symptoms has already embarked you on a Kundalini journey. Okay, and I'm going to suggest the safety protocols for you. And so, uh, George, if you go to Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, and you look uh-huh. at the left, you look at the left hand margin, and, and go to the safeties. Okay, this Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com, numeral one dot com. So it's okay. <laughs> I'm looking back on that and saying, well, how did I get that? Name? Anyway, oh. so <laughs> all the other names were taken. <coughs> so uh, go there, yes, go there, George, oh. and look at the safety okay. protocols on the left-hand margin. In the left hand. Okay, I'm going to go to Kundalini Awakening Systems number one dot com, and then I'm going to put safety protocols. No, no, no. You just they're they're right there. There, it's 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 a button that you push. Okay. Just a button. You okay. don't have to search for it. Well, uh, I do 